everybody, it's Silent Child here, and I've been getting some requests about uh, you should do some more real-time tutorials. So, here we go. I'm going to show you guys some stuff about uh, line art, because line art can be uh, very difficult or very easy, depending on how you take it. So, uh, you'll notice I'm in Clip Studio Paint, as usual. Uh, these may not work exactly for Photoshop or something like that, so you kind of have to... Uh, you know, play around with it. But we're going to go over several things. First off, sketching. Sketching is pretty much just getting the rough idea of what you are trying to draw. Uh, you know, I use models to really get in uh, the right proportions and everything because if I try to draw freehand, stuff just doesn't look right. At least not to me. So, um, you know, I'm going to pick something here and just go with it. And uh, if you guys have seen my other tutorials, you know about Daz Studio and you know how I get my models, so I'm not going to really go over that and how I put them in my artwork and everything. You just go and watch that video and uh, you'll find out everything you need to know. So, whether you're doing freehand or you're using a Daz model like this, sketch is very important because it pretty much lays the groundwork for what you're doing. And I don't really do uh, any sketching in v vector. Once again, another video, <laughs> vector and raster. I mostly do it in raster layer because with vector, you're not really doing clean lines here. That's not really the focus. The focus is you're really just kind of roughing out what you want. I made my own sketch pencil. Now, you can do this in Clip Studio Paint. You can also do this in uh, Photoshop. And the way I did it is I made my own pencil. I uh, did this, duplicate subtool. Now you can duplicate a brush in Photoshop. And um, what you want to do is you want something that's going to be soft, you know, some uh, brush density, something with some opacity. So when you draw, it starts off light and then it gets darker as you go. Okay? So like... That's the light pencil. I wanted something even better than that. Something like this, where it starts off light. The more you go over it, see how it darkens up? You can really get in there and do what you need to do. That's just like a real pencil, and that's what I needed. So what I did is I copied the lighter pencil, and I went here to Settings of Subtool, and I renamed it to Sketch Pencil, changed the icon and everything, and then I clicked on here which is the uh, wrench, and I made sure that all of my settings are right, like the brush tip settings. I wanted to make sure that the thickness of the brush settings and everything were going to be just like this, where the opacity and the uh, tapering were going to be with pin pressure. So now I've got this really nice pencil-y kind of sketch pencil. So, okay, so back to, once you got your sketch pencil down right, this is how you do it. What you're doing is you're not really going for details. What you're doing is you're just kind of scribbling in your shapes so you can get a basic idea of what you're working with. So, uh, like here, we're going to go like this, just a little small, just like a real pencil. I'm going to go in her face here. Mm hmm. You'll notice I'm not really, I'm not really uh, tracing. I'm kind of uh, just going around where stuff's going to be at. Her eyes, eyebrows, just kind of mapping out where I need to go. So if it matters, it doesn't really matter if you use a Death Studio model or if you're using, you know, your own just freehand and imagination. It's going to work the same. I just want to make sure I get my proportions in there right. You make sure you get everything in here the way you want it. Uh, pretty much going over the outlines of each part so that you are, you know, mapping out where everything's at. Like in her face here. You know, I got her mapped out exactly where I want it. Hand, fingers. And I'm not really tracing each, you know, like into the line. I'm just getting an idea where the fingers are, touching her face. 
get her hand, her arm over here, and see it's messy, and it's supposed to be, because that's what we're doing. We're just getting an idea of where this is all going. We might want to even outline muscles, so that if you have any musculature, you know what you're dealing with. Let's see. So, I'm going to try to get in here and get all the lines and get the basic figure shape. That's what we're going for here. Basic figure shape. Basic basic stuff. Just like if you were freehanding. So, it's, everything's really quick. Everything's really rough. You're just getting the basic shapes of what's going on in the body, the torso. And that's what we're doing. We're just getting basic outline and shape. And this is what sketching is. It's okay if it's not perfect. It's okay if it's not, you know, just as long as you got the shapes in there where you need them to go, what you're trying to do, that's what we're doing. You can even bring in hair. Since she's kind of like in a shower or something, let's see. We're going to put her hairline here. Draw in a hairline. Hair will be out to here. Goes kind of flat on her head because she's in a shower. So we just go straight back and do that. Have this. We'll have a one strand going over here. So maybe that'll be from over here or something. And we'll have another strand back over here hanging down. See? You get the basic idea what you want to do. Now once we got our sketch down here of our girl, now we get to the fun part of really, really getting into the line art. Here's some basic stuff about line art you need to understand. The difference between raster and vector when it comes to line art is kind of important. Do, there are several tools that you can use that work best with a raster layer that uh, you know would be really great for making lines. So in case your pen skills are not all that great, you can use these lines. These tools are down here in U, Continuous Curve, and curve. We also have straight line, we got polyline, lasso fill. You've seen me use lasso fill for coloring, but this is how we use for line art. So you get like a good five or six, and you can just use it like the pen tool, where you just go over where you want, and then notice that it curves curves where you get it. You double click to cut it off. And this is a pretty good tool if you're just really having problems getting lines in there where you know you're just like ugh, I just cannot get the shape of her arms right. Uh, my lines look crappy. I mean just I just cannot get stuff done. It's a little hard seeing with a pen, <laughs> with a Wacom tablet. You, that double clicking can get in the way at times. But see, go over here, and that's pretty good. It's pretty good at getting in the lines and doing the curves. So it's a very good tool to use if you just really have problems getting getting smooth lines in. That being said, do not think, oh, well, no problem then. I don't need to learn how to use the pen tool. I can just use these curves and you know continuous curve tools and I never have to I never have to really learn how to draw. Wrong. 
don't use this as a crutch. Use this as a tool. If you just really have problems with the major lines, you know, by all means, use this tool. But don't just use this tool. And I'll show you why. It's because even though this makes really good lines, see, I'm, and I'm doing really good outlines on this girl, and it's really fast, and now we're making a lot of effort, see? Very little effort, and now we're almost done. Just, there you go, see? That looks really boring and flat. Now, if what you're going for is you're just using line art to kind of do some edge work or whatever for the coloring, like kind of like Danlon Fuga does, then that's okay. I mean, you can you can just keep it like that. But if you really want line art, this is kind of boring. And we can fix that once again. Cheating tools. Go down here to the line correct tool, correct line tool, which is Y. And there's correct line width, thicken width. Now I have this turned to 0 0.6, but you can turn it up or down as you want. And what you do is whatever you want thickened, what lines you want thickened, you just color in just like this. And just like magic, The lines get thicker at the curves where you want them to be. And soon you got dramatic curves. Go, wow! That's so cool! So I don't actually have to use the pen tool. I can just use this raster layer and use these line tools and I can just kind of cheat and I can have dramatic lines and I don't even have to really try or really have to learn how to do line art properly with a pen. Well if that's the way you want to do art you know I'm not gonna stop you don't let me judge you but you are ever in a situation where you don't have Clip Studio Paint, um, how are you going to make lines if you don't know how to use your pen tools and stuff properly? Probably best to just use this for emergency situations or if you're just really lazy and you don't want to deal with it. This tool also works for the pen tool in case you use the pen tool. Do the pen tool real quick. Do, do, do. Suppose that you know you did do some, but the lines are not where you want them to be. They're just kind of there and kind of flat. Raster also kind of pops them into place. Kind of helps you out a bit. So raster is, it's not bad to use these tools, but you might want to uh, learn how to use the tools yourself so that you're not just relying on cheater tools. Really and truly, you just use the cheater tools if you're really pressed for time or something, or your line art's not really that important. You just want to bust out some line art, basic line art, so you can you know, start coloring or something, that's fine. For the rest of us, though, let's go over it. So you open up like a raster layer. Okay, so this is what I'm going to go over. Normally I use a G-Pen, and you see that it tapers depending on pen pressure. What you want to do before you ever start trying to ink and everything, the major rule really is to kind of thicken your lines around curves. So what you want to do is you want to start off small and get thicker and then go back to small again until you have this control to where you can start off thick and go thin 
or you could start off thin and get thicker whichever is smoother for you and if you say wow how do you do that I can't do that my hands are like uh, and I'm all over the place and my lines are like this and you know I can't draw straight lines like that I'm not very you know not very quick at it you know see just like wow that's amazing how do you do that well outside of you know simple practice okay um, there's some factors that you got to work out with, with when it comes to your welcome tablet and with Clip Studio Paint. Number one, you want to look at this right here, stabilization. Change how much to stabilize input from the tablet pen. I have mine set up to 75 because <laughs> when I don't have high stabilization, I'm like this. Oh, you know, okay, that didn't work. Let's let's try that again. Uh, 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 uh. And that's the way my lines look. They don't look like this. You know, see? That stabilization, it helps me get past my wobbly hands to where I can draw pretty straight lines. And you go, that's great for straight lines. How are your curves? Well, like this. See? how easily I can get to from thick to thin. You want to try to do these exercises. And first of all, we want to make sure about your stability though. If you have wobbly hands like me, try turning up your stabili stabilization to where it really can help you keep your lines straight or smooth as you possibly want them. You say, okay, well, I'm playing around the stabilization, but it's still, it's still kind of not working. I can't, I can't taper the ends and stuff like what you're doing. I, I, uh, my stuff just kind of looks like that. It's, you know, I, I, it kind of, kind of looks like it's clubbed. You know, it's kind of like, like that. You know, it just, it's not tapering properly. You know, it's doing crap like that. How do I fix that? Okay, for that, you're gonna have to go to your Wacom tablet settings. So, open your tablet settings, and what we're looking at is right here. You go to the pen tab, and this tip feel. Now, depending on if you go to soft or firm, depends on you. Normally, I keep mine right in the middle. But uh, if you have tend to have a softer touch, you might want to go back to firmer. And if you um, have a you know you're pretty heavy-handed, you might want to bring it down to the softer touch play around go back and forth with the settings like this you just kind of well you know let's move it down this way minimize it all right let's what's that like and that's okay but yeah let's just see I'm not I'm not able to get the soft line up the top so that's too soft Okay, so, well, you know, turn it back up. Uh, maybe we'll turn it back up uh, a couple of notches. All right, let's see what that's like. Okay, that's cool, but now I'm kind of having a little trouble, you know, getting into the, getting into the, th making the line thick. See, it's just a little too much, a little too much for me. So, you know, change it back to the way it was right here in the middle. That's just right. Let's try it out. Yep, see? I can make thin lines. I can make thick lines. So I'm good with my pressure. And the more I practice, the better I get, see? It's alright. So that's good. Alright, so that's a good that's a good setting right there. Matter of fact, I'm gonna turn it up just one more just because. And we'll try that. Because I kinda liked this one. Where I had to really press in to, you know, get those thick lines. So that's that's a good that's a good setting for me. See, I even changed my setting. I didn't know about that. Okay, so the second thing you want to look at is right here, pen mode and mapping. Now, th in case you got a big tablet, I don't really have a big tablet. You can't really see it, but this is just a handheld tablet. It's about roughly the size of a of a tablet tablet, like a iPad or something. Now you can go full tablet area where it goes from corner to corner, but if this is too big of a space for you and you just can't, you just, uh, you know, you just have trouble 
you just have trouble getting from this point to this point in one smooth motion because there's just too much space for you to you know get that line in there you can go in here portion and set and you can uh, change the space I recommend going right in the middle of the pad and you can make it as small you know make it a square make it a rectangle you can make it as small or as big as you want and depending on you know what size you want like I made it a little bit smaller that pin see how fast that goes yoink yoink I can go completely across the page in one single stroke that's awesome see so that works out for me too it might work out for you so make sure that if if you're just having problems getting from point A to point B try uh, try mapping out your tablet to where you're in a s working with a smaller space instead of trying to use your whole tablet so once you get that all set up and everything and you got your opacity and you got your stabilization set up and everything now we can start getting into the nitty-gritty about inking so like I said you want to try these exercises start off thin go thick thin thick thin thick so you can't really see that it's kinda kinda small is it start off thin and get thicker like this and see kinda get to the practice of making thin thick lines start off thick and go thin like so start off thin and get thick like so like that work on different strokes also see which direction is perfectly okay for your hand like for me this direction works great this direction is great see perfect however now you try uh, try this let me see here oh, I deleted my layer try a uh, side to side Said, see, try. Okay, now it's starting to get a little hard. So I can't go this way. It's starting to get a little difficult. So, okay, so I know this direction is a no go for me. Okay, so this direction is yeah, pretty good. Okay, so mostly on downward strokes, I'm good at. Upward strokes, yeah, it takes a little work. If I'm going this direction, it's harder. But if I'm going this direction, or this direction, it's much easier. So you might want to check that too. Check and see which direction is good for you. Mine is this. I have a hard time doing this. So that's to keep in mind too, because you want to make sure that if, you, if you try to keep all of your strokes that are comfortable for you. So don't be afraid to move your paper around, and I'll demonstrate that. Next exercise you want to try to do is spirals. Do the same thing, just like uh, just like this. Thick, and then thin, thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin. Or try to have the thick part in the same part, like you want to go. Thin and then thick, and then back up to thin again, and then thick, and then back up to thin again, and then thick, and then back up to thin again. See? Kind of looks like a Tim Burton thing, doesn't it? But this exercise here will help you get thick and thin with your curves, which is important. You want to, when you're doing a curve, you want the thick part to be in the curve. Think of it kind of like calligraphy. You got an S like so. You got a D you got a W like Walt Disney <laughs> like that. 
you think of it like calligraphy, you know, got a C. I don't know if it's sometimes when you cursive, people don't read cursive anymore, but see, like, I write my name. You go Daniel. So you go D A N I E L. That's horrible. But you get the idea. <coughs> So, keeping that in mind, now let's try what we do with our inking. So, inking is the same way. It's kind of like that song from the Beastie Boys. Let, Let it flow! Let yourself go! Slow and low! That is the tempo! Let it flow! Let yourself go! Slow and low! That is the tempo! Oh, just keep that in mind. Slow and low. Let it flow. So, you start off with a pretty good sized brush. Not too thick, but not too thin. And then you start off, and you just make it thick around the edges, like so. Keep that stabilization there. And if you go, well, that didn't connect down here, that's okay. You can move in if you have to. Just really get in there and Make sure that they connect. Okay. Make sure that this mouth is just the way you want it. And it takes some pin pressure. See? I can make this line as thin or as thick as I want it. You don't have to make it f fully thick. You can just go like that. Slow and low. And I go over here and do Nostril. See? Slow and low. You're painting these. It's like calligraphy. You're kind of writing these lines in here. It's not so much drawing them as you're writing them. You're, you're painting them. Get that all in there. And then see, and if you get it wrong, that's okay. You say, oh, that was too thick there. Yeah, there you go. See? See what I mean about I went like this, which was against which was against my normal wrist pattern. So, you know, you can go in here. Now that's a lot smoother, see? go. Same thing with the eyes. Get the eyes to be out here. That's okay if you don't get it right the first time. You don't have to get it right the first time. That's why we have erasers. But you want to try and try to play around with your settings. You don't have to, just because you have a big brush, doesn't mean you have to use the full capacity of that pen. If you don't want it to be as, as thick as it could be, you don't have to. You can turn this down to a smaller size. And there we go. See? In fact, a lot of artists, they don't use the full capacity of the pen. But if it makes you nervous, go ahead and turn it down. Go ahead and turn it down. You can, you know, you do what you can. There we go. See? And just get it in there. Even though the pen is really big, see the size? I'm not using the full capacity of the thickness. I'm just using a little bit. See? And you want to make sure that you get in these lines. Just make them dynamic, but not, you know. And if you have to stop, see, you still got this curve right here. That's okay. Start about right here. Make it thin, thick. 
There you go. See? See? And it just takes some practice. Pretty soon, with the stabilization and everything, you're able to just go in here and just do what you need to do just as quickly as you can without too much trouble. Notice that stabilization kicking in. You see how my cursor, it catches up to my cursor after I made the mark. Very helpful. Very helpful. And I have uh, everything set the way I need it, like all the space and everything on my tablet to where I'm not using the full length of the tablet to try and get from this point to this point, so to speak. I can just go in here. Let's just quickly get your lines in there. See? And you want the curves to be the thickest points. Now I'm just kind of going over. But, you know, just working on connecting lines is another thing. If you don't want you don't want them to look like this, you know, where there's overlapping lines or whatever. You learn how to overlap the lines, like here. I'll show you on this finger. So you go from this line here, and go around the corner, and it stop. You start off about right here in the thick part. Start off thin, work your way out, and get thick again, like that. Same thing with the finger here. Work your way around here and go thick, and then go about here, and go thin, thick, like that. You're kind of keeping that thin, thick brush stroke going, you know? That's, I'm going to leave that out. It's really prevalent with hair show your hair real quick. Let's do some hair real quick. So, you know, you get some lines like this, maybe a little bit bigger. Lines like this. See? And that's too thick right there, so you want thick and then you stay on the outside. You like that. You're going to go in here and just draw in like that and then we'll just keep up once again see that's what happens when you go against the grain so to speak of how wh what's comfortable for your hand and your wrist so my wrist does not go that way very well so you want to keep the strokes in the direction is comfortable for you. So you can get in there and make those lines smooth. Yeah. And if they go like this, see where I've got around this curve, but I need to straighten it out. You need to do that just like this. Ta-da! You can even where that one left off, you can just go like that. See? Doot. And if you don't make them thick enough, or if they're too thick, like I thought that was a little too thick, so you just redo it until it looks the way you want it to look. It's your drawing and your art. And you can just Follow the lines that you drew down here, start off at a thick point, and just continue it on. Connect like so. And 
and if it doesn't look right, you just redo it. With stabilization, you should be able to get in there and make it fit without too much shaking. See? It takes some practice, see? Still, like I said, everything takes practice. You're not going to be able to just get it overnight. See how he got the hair? Now, this is just demonstration. You're like, well, that's still not very good, Daniel. That's kind of crappy, you know. Also, you know, there's some things like her mouth looks weird. If your mouth looks weird, fine. Okay, you just go in here with your eraser. Erase and redo it. You know, it's no big deal. Just like, uh, let's let's go with this. And we're going to have teeth like this. Make it thicken like that. There you go. There you go. Much better. See? And if you want... The, the main thing about the lines, I'm going to go over that real fast again, so you really understand. Like, start off, like, see, we want to do this shoulder right here, and this thin, this line is really thin, and we don't want to be up in its grill like this. I mean, yeah, you can, but you're going to be like, sh 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 and you're going to be having to connect a lot of short strokes if you do it like this. So, get a good distance away from your picture, not, you know, super detail, go into the thick part, and then go thin, and then start going thick. Well, not like that. I don't know what happened there. My elbow went along with a chair or something. Sorry. So we'll try that again. You go thin, and then you start thickening it out. And then, you know, we still need to thick that out there, so you just thin and thicken it out. Start about here, thin, thicken it out. There's this part over here next to our breast. And there we go. And it takes some practice. And then see, like, this cut in too, too deep. So I erase that. We start in again, about here, where it didn't go too deep. And just continue it on. There you go. We'll draw in her elbow over here like that. Get, get a little overlap line where it looks like a wrinkle. So it looks like her forearm, looks like a realistic forearm. We'll just draw in that line like that. Yep. See, you got to make sure that you're drawing with your whole arm, pretty much, not just, not just your, oh, damn, not just your your wrist. Don't just use your wrist. Use your whole arm so you get a good grip in there and do that. This line, I'm going to have to redo this whole line here. So I'm going to start off about here and start it off thin and get thick. There we go. We want this thin and to go around here. And then we're going to do the fingers over here. So, uh, thumb. Okay, like so. And then over here. And then this. And we're going to go with the knuckles. Knuckles like so. And go around fingers, keeping track of the shape that we are keeping. See? 
fingers are not blunt unless they're wearing gloves. So we want tapered knuckles. Let's see. It takes a little bit of practice. Like I said, you don't have to go full force just because you're using a big brush. You don't have to use full force. But the size, you can use whatever size is comfortable. It all takes pin pressure control. Ta -da! Pin pressure control. And you can do as many or as few lines as you want. And whatever is comfortable for you. And if you don't get it right the first time, it's okay. You can redo it until it comes out. Erase any line that doesn't look right. Like that looks weird right there. The breast doesn't come in like that. The breast comes in like this. See? Also, when you're inking, avoid doing what I just did there. Remember, this is not a pencil. So don't sit there and go like this. Okay, I want to go around this corner like that. There you go. Because look what you did. It's made a hundred little hair lines. Don't do that. That's why we have stabilization and everything. Go ahead and just make that smooth line. One smooth line. See? And if you have to get in close and everything, don't be afraid to get in close. Just know that you're going to have to, if you go in too close, you're going to have to connect a lot of lines and have to double over on your lines. So, depending on how close you get, you could get too close. And But if you're comfortable doing this and it helps you really get in there and get these lines straight, then you know, more power to you. I'm not going to judge. So there you go. See? There you go. Make sure that, you know, you just got your stability down. And the more stable that you have the pin, the more control you got, the better your line art is going to be. It's all about control over your pin pressure and your stability. And if you get to the place where you can do it quick, that's perfect. That's the goal you're aiming for, is to try and do this as quickly as possible. without, you know, too many go-overs and mistakes and stuff. Yeah. So, that's your goal. So you want to make sure you're doing this as quickly as possible without, without uh, making it look good as quickly as possible. And there you go. And you can put whatever lines you want. You can put whatever lines you need. Like, I'm not going to put her abs, but if you wanted to, you know, you can make these lines as thick or as thin or as subtle or as whatever you want. You know, like, if you really want her ribs to stick out or whatever, you know, that's fine. You can do that comic book style like this. It's your prerogative. Depends on what effects you want in your picture. And there you go. So, it's all about control of your stabilization. It's all about control over your strokes from going from thin to thick and back up to thin. And it's all about dynamic. Dynamic! You know, they look good and dynamic if that's the, the effect you're going for. Uh, 
line weight has a lot of effect on the mood and just the overall style of the piece and it can really make your artwork pop whether you are doing color or if you're just making ink so keep that in mind and just practice those exercises that I showed you and in no time you'll be able to do this quickly and efficiently with very little effort and it will make your color and everything uh, so much better you make your art and your color and everything so much better so I hope you guys learned a lot um, if you have any questions or anything hit me up in the comments below if you guys got any suggestions on what you would like me to do some tutorials on once again hit me down below um, and until next time You'll be just as good as me one day. <laughs> See you later. Bye.